This is Surfing Through Cinema. I'm your host, Hawaii Harry. Today I'll be discussing the next film for Disney Week. All about dogs and Cruella de Vil, this episode is all about 101 Dalmatians. Okay, so some technical details about 101 Dalmatians. So, Xerox technology was used to create the hundreds of spots on the dogs. And what I mean by that is they scanned it, and rather than having to ink the whole cell, they just scanned it, and they were able to save hundreds of thousands of dollars and hours upon hours of time because uh, Sleeping Beauty had been a financial flop, so they couldn't afford to make a crazy elaborate movie like they had done with them. Ub Iwerks, he came up with a new scanning technology to do this process. And this is the distinct style you see with the rough edges um, and kind of hazy looking drawings. They kind of look a little unfinished. And this is a technique they would use up until the 1980s. Another technical point, this was the highest grossing animated film at that point. And every subsequent re-release, it now has a total of $900 million made on this movie. So uh, lots of people love this movie. Lots of dog lovers love this movie. Um, Another technical detail, this is the first Disney film where the script is created by one person. His name is Bill Peet. And normally they would have a bunch of writers collaborating together. But in this instance, he was the only one who created the script, the, everything, the outline of it. And as a result, the author of the 101 Dalmatians book, she actually thought both the art and the story were way better than what she had written. So this is one of the few instances where uh, the author was actually happy with a Disney adaptation. Okay, so let's get into the plot. So a dog named Pongo, he helps his master, Roger, meet and fall in love with Anita, who also has a Dalmatian. Her name's Perdita. Perdita and, and Pongo have 15 puppies. And Corella DeVille, she's a friend of Anita's, she wants all the puppies. And what we discover is because she wants to turn their furs into she wants to use their skins to turn into a big fur coat. And, uh, but Roger, he, having just revived one of the puppies who they thought they had lost, he decides, no, we're going to keep these puppies and you're not going to get any of them. Because Corella DeVille, she's this crazy, in-your-face type of lady and um, has a hard time taking no for an answer. She calls Roger an idiot and slams the door to get out of there. And like I said, she wants to get her way, so... She has her two goons, Jasper and Horace, go in and kidnap the puppies. And Pongo and Perdita use the twilight bark, and that's like a chain of barks that they use to contact any dogs within the area to see if they've seen the puppies. And uh, a dog named Colonel and a cat named Sergeant Tibbs, they find the puppies after listening to the call in a hell hall, actually. <laughs> funny enough and that's Cruella de Vil's old house and they're able to help the puppies escape from Horace and Jasper um, along with Pongo and Perdita and then they make the dangerous trek back home through uh, blizzards through uh, you know multiple times with Corella coming to try and take the puppies and eventually they do make it back home uh, Corella and Jasper and Horace they crash into each other and that finally stops the chase of it and Roger and Anita decide to take all the puppies in totaling at around 101 and uh, taking all the puppies plus their two dogs equals 101 and Roger he's a, a singer a songwriter and his song about Corella de Vil which is a very very famous song from this movie um makes him a total star and he decides they have the money now they can now raise all these dogs and that's where the film ends on a happy note all right so that's the plot to 101 dalmatians i'm gonna go in a break real quick but first here's a message from our sponsor this podcast is brought to you by anchor if you haven't heard about anchor it's the easiest way to make a podcast here's how it's totally free there are tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast from your computer 
and even your cell phone. But that's not all. Anchor distributes your podcast for you so it can be heard on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and many, many more. You could even make money from your podcast with no minimum listenership. Anchor is everything you need to make a complete podcast all in one small place. So go on and download the Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started today. Okay, so now that we're back from our break, I'm going to get into some critical views and my personal views on 101 Dalmatians. Rotten Tomatoes gives it a 98%, whereas the audience score is 76%. So it seems the critics appreciate this movie more for its style, whereas the audience kind of finds it boring, or if you're a cat lover, you probably wouldn't like this movie. There's a lot of barking, a lot of crazy dogs in it. On IMDb, it has a 7.3 out of 10, and many fans are saying this is a dog lover's movie. This is not a this is not a general audience movie. This is really for dog lovers. And then Variety at the time that the film was released said this is a painstaking painstaking creative effort. At the time critics actually didn't like this movie. They thought it was subpar to a lot of Disney's classic movies like Cinderella and Snow White. And so when this came out they thought, "Oh, this is just another Lady and the Tramp type of movie. This is kind of a unofficial sequel to it." But over the years, it's gained more notoriety and more recognized for its technological advances in animation using the Xerox process. Now, many people don't like it now uh, compared to the very illustrative and very, um, very beautifully illustrated movies like Sleeping Beauty and um, Fantasia. But nevertheless... This Xerox technology changed the future of animation for a very long time. Um, They cut budgets in half. This kind of shows in, uh, even on TV, with shows like um, Scooby-Doo, pretty much anything from Hanna-Barbera, they kind of use very similar technology as a result of Disney making it popular. Like I said, uh, critics nowadays, they adore the movie for technical advances and all that. Whereas fans, eh, they don't really like it. <clears throat> if you're not a dog fan, you probably wouldn't like this movie. All right, so now I'll get into my personal views. I absolutely loved this movie as a kid. I loved the dogs. I loved the the action. I loved them biting and fighting with Jasper and Horace. I thought that was funny and great. I loved it as a kid. Um, now, there are some problems I notice now. Uh, the Xerox animation doesn't look good. For an example, there's a scene with Corilla driving down the hill into a snowbank, and when she starts to back out of it, it looks like real snow, but they drew over it, which is how they did the Xerox, was they took real live objects and traced over it and then scanned it in so that they can paint it in over and over again. Um, But you could really tell in that scene, they didn't spend a lot of time on the animation with that. And... There are instances like that that I keep thinking of where maybe I wish they spent more time in those areas, kind of beefing it up and make it look cohesive with the rest of it. Um, But other than that, the plot was great. I remembered a lot more happening, but I just think having seen the sequels and maybe the TV show as a kid, I think kind of jumbled it up a little bit. I remembered it being a lot longer, but it's a cute story. Like I said, if you like dogs, you'll probably like this movie. Um, it's not romantic like Lady and the Tramp is. This is definitely more of a kid-directed movie. I will say one more critical point. The the scene with the the Twilight Bark goes on for a little too long. And, uh, I mean, I guess if you like to hear do- dog barks all the time, maybe you'll enjoy it. But I feel it goes a little too long and I think it could have been trimmed down a bit. But other than that, I give this movie an 8 out of 10. I still love the the characters. I think they're great, especially Jasper and Horace. I think they're hilarious villains, and I love their uh I love their English accents. I think it's hilarious, and Cruella is also hilarious. I think it I think it's a great story. Um But yeah, those are my thoughts and feelings on the 101 Dalmatians. Next time, I'll be discussing the next film for Cinephile Week. Concluding the series we started this month out with, this episode will be all about War and Peace Parts 3 and 4. 
All right, well, until next time, this has been Surfing Through Cinema with Hawaii Harry. Take care. Thank you for listening to Surfing Through Cinema. Make sure to check us out on Facebook at Surfing Through Cinema with Hawaii Harry and on Instagram with Surfing Through Cinema. We also have a website, www.anchor.fm forward slash Surfing Through Cinema, where you can learn more details on upcoming episodes and on past episodes.